Hi guys, what's up? I've got a video for you today. It's been a long time coming. It's something a few of you have requested um, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, your stance and balance at the Oki. Now before I get into it, a quick disclaimer. Um, I probably should say something like um, you throw best when you throw natural. There's no specific way to do it. Um, it frustrates me a bit when people say that. I see people all the time asking for advice on their throws on Facebook groups or on YouTube, on Twitter, um, through all your different social medias. Um, and I see a lot of people just commenting, do what's natural, do what's natural. Now, I agree with that 90%. Um, my main concern with that is that if everyone just had to play their own natural way, and it was a matter of practice, we'd all be pros. I'd be a pro. I've done my 10,000 hours. I'm not a pro. Um, but there are certain techniques that you can do to improve your consistency, to improve your accuracy, and to make sure if you're not hitting 100 every time, you're hitting 60s. The margin for error, if you're not playing with the right technique, is a complete chasm compared to if you are playing with a technique. Um, so before I get too far into it, I'm not preaching to people, this is the way you have to throw, this is the way you have to stand. Um, but every pro, apart from probably Mensu Sulevich, have a lot of common factors in their technique. So Mensu is a bit of a freak, he throws with his shoulder, he's got an exaggerated lean, he's a bit jerky, he's a bit of the Jockey Wilson of our time. Um, but he must just be so coordinated to play like that. Um, the rest of the players, if you looked at Michael Van Gogh and Simon Whitlock, Mervyn King, you'd think they all throw completely differently. They do. Personality of your throw and a natural style um, shouldn't be tampered with too much at all. So everyone who puts the comments on there saying, throw naturally, throw naturally, I get it, you are right. Um, but there's nothing wrong with backing up your natural ability, your natural style with some basic techniques. Now I look at it um, like uh, another couple of sports, if you're looking for accuracy. It's not just sports, it's everything. If you're, um, I don't know, um, it sounds silly, shooting a gun. If you're just shooting at a target like this, if you've got natural ability, you'll hit it. However, if you're in at the shoulder or holding it steady, whatever it might be, um, if you're going to miss the target, you're not going to miss it by as much. And that's just down to technique. Darts is exactly the same. It's an aiming game, and it's the same with if you're playing golf. You might have the best hand-eye coordination in the world, but if you don't hit it right, it's going to go very wrong. But if you know a bit of technique and you don't hit it right, it's not going to go as wrong. So that's all I'm saying here. Um, I'm not saying if you've got a throw that works for you, throw it out the window and follow this. I'm saying if you're struggling and you're looking for something a little bit different, these are some basics of how to stand at the hockey and give yourself a better chance of a consistent game with a solid base and good balance. Okay, here we go. I've got my darts in my hand, but there's no real need. Um, all you're going to be looking at is looking at my feet. So I've got a straight on camera just looking at my body position, um, and then I've got a second camera that'll be um, more concentrated on my feet. So um, essentially we're here at the hockey. As you'd imagine, the board is straight in front of me. I'm not using a curved docky, so everyone who got their knickers in the twist about me asking the question, should the hockey be curved? Chewy beans, I'm throwing straight. Right, so there are three main ways to stand at the hockey. There's only one way that I would say don't do. So out of those four options, the one I would say don't do is this. There's a player in um, our local league, a local legend, who's played county, um, is one of the who's Menso Sulevich type freaks. And I always think, how good would he have been if he had adopted a more sensible um, stance? So the issue you have when you're throwing here is your centre of balance is directly up. So um, we know the basic principles of darts are when you're at the hockey, you want to be stood as still as possible. If you're stood like this and you're throwing, it's really difficult to get forward momentum just using your forearm and your tricep. That's all you should be using. It's also really hard to get your head angled behind the dart. So to sight the dart, you're either going to have to sight the dart with your head away from the line of your arm, or you're going to have to bring your arm across, which then creates more of this angle instead of this angle. So if you're in this position, 
you're more prone to rocking backwards and forwards, you're more prone to using your shoulder or to jerk forward and be off balance. So if you're throwing like that, this is the one time that I will say, if that's your natural throw, forget it, change it. So um, your three options are essentially like this. So you can go for the Phil Taylor, Michael Van Gogh approach, which is a laterally placed foot. So you're 90 degrees away from the board. Now the main thing with all of these three that I'm gonna talk you through, I'll work from the bottom up, is a flat front foot. So you should be almost on the balls of your leading foot, but not quite on the ball of your foot. Because if you're on the ball of your foot, it, you can be a bit bouncy. You don't wanna be jumping, you wanna be on the ground. So you wanna have a lot of your weight towards the ball of your foot, but make sure your foot is flat. You don't want to be up in the air. There's only one player who does that, and that's Nathan Aspinall. And I know you're probably thinking, well, Nathan Aspinall is one of the best players in the world, but he's the only one who does it. So all of the others, it is a flat foot. And this is the same whether you're forward on an angle or 90 degrees. So you keep that flat against the ground. Second thing, lock this knee. Your front knee needs to be locked. If it's bent, then again, you're bouncing. Your height is going to change in a throw. And if you've played in a competition and you're anything like me, you get there 11 o'clock in the morning, you haven't had enough beer in you yet, and your nerves are going, your knees literally are jangling. So you lock that knee, it's a lot harder for that to happen. So literally that knee has got to be, you can have a look at my lovely legs, it's got to be solid like that. Now, as a general rule, I'd say 75 to 80% of your body weight should be leaning forward. So it should be on this hip, driving through this um, lock knee and then into your foot, flat planted across the ground. That way, your momentum is leaning forward as so, and your rear leg is just here as ballast for you to um, balance evenly at the back of the hockey. A really good proponent of this is Glenn Durham. You'll see him, he hasn't got as quite a pronounced back foot. His is maybe like here, but um, you can see all his weight is locked into this rigid, first um, side of his body through his hip, knee and foot, whereas the back foot is just here just to make sure you're not toppling over. So once you're in this position, your weight and your momentum is towards the board. Now the importance of that, rather than here, it doesn't seem like much, again is as I spoke um, just about, about the wrong way to throw, is um, to get towards the board, your natural, body, um, your natural body instincts are going to be to either use more shoulder to get it up there, to jerk with your body, to throw it harder, but in general, you've not got enough forward momentum and enough forward weight to get the dart to the board. So yeah, reaching for it a little bit more. So you don't wanna to be too relaxed um, in your lower body. In your, sh in your arms, you want to be as relaxed as possible. But down here, you wanna be rigid forward, and after a good session of darts, your leg should ache a little bit. So um, this is the way Van Gerwen, Taylor, a lot of pros um, throw with their foot laterally put across here. So the important thing to do if you choose to throw like this is to not close your body off too much. Because you can end up throwing like this. Then you're throwing over your shoulder and your shoulder becomes far too open and your head position is an awkward angle. What you'll see Michael do really well is he's got this locked. I don't know how well he's gonna cope with this in later life, but he's pivoted on his hip. So his body is much more at a 45 degree angle. So it's pointing to 10, 11 o'clock um, rather than um, at nine o'clock over here. By doing that, it means that he's not gonna crank his head over and he's not gonna compensate with his arm being brought across here. He can still throw straight, but he's got that solid base and he throws from here. And yeah, we did exactly the same, I almost hit that. I didn't mean to let go of that dart there. So I'll probably keep that in. Um, so he's got a rigid position here and he can just throw straight like that. The other um, main option is the 12 o'clock. Simon Whitlock uses this. Gary Anderson isn't far off of it. And that is to have your foot essentially pointing straight down at the 20. Now, um, one of the benefits of doing this is you are perfectly in line. Um, 
the issues that you have with this is that your throwing arm, if you're a right-hander, same if you're a left-hander, just flip the screen, um, is that you either have to pull your head across to get in line with the side, leave it to one side and you're gambling on a bit of a hand-eye coordination, or again, you're bringing your hand across here. So someone like Simon Whitlock uses this. So if you're left-eye dominant and a right-handed thrower, this might be the way for you because you're opening your body towards the board and he's able to bring his body across a little bit and his arm across a little bit, compromising so one's not doing too much. And he lines up with his left eye and is able to throw like that. So um, if you're left eye dominant, that might be a way to do it. So the tip for this is if this is your um, stance, it's exactly the same, flat foot, lock knee, this foot is just ballast at the back here, leaning just as much weight forward is to make sure you can get your head behind the dart without cranking too far over to one side or having to bring your arm across like this. And the last option, this is um, more or less what I do. I'm probably a bit more 90 degrees than I am um, straight on. And that's pointing at 10, 11 o'clock like this. And essentially, you are the happy medium between the last two that I've shown you. So here, exactly the same. You've got a solid base, a flat foot, a lock knee, 80% of your weight on the front hip. Your back leg is acting as ballast and balance. The top of your frame should be rotated enough that you're not compensating with the shoulder to get it straight, or you're not compensating with your head to get in behind it. So if I was to just adapt the natural body position of this and hold my dart up, I'm looking over here. So this shoulder naturally has to become more open if I don't rotate my hips and that encourages more shoulder and my head I'm going to have to crank all the way over here. So the importance of pivoting your hips is huge. So if, you've, if you are adopting that position and you're throwing like this, more things are going to go wrong than right. However, if you're here and you pivot with your hips so your front of your body is straighter, you can get your head right behind your arm. Your arm is straight. You're doing that. That's what I want to try and emphasize is your arm should be a direct pull back and forward. Phil always used to say he draws a plumb line from the treble 20 along the ground up his body to his dart and he pulls it straight back and fires down there. If it's good for the greatest player of all, if it's good enough for the greatest player of all time, it's good enough for all of us. And um, so you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be doing that. You want to be as straight as possible and keep your head as straight as possible behind the dart without cranking your neck over one side or the other. The only way you can do that is compensating the hips and make sure your pivot is round here. So I've said it a million times, we'll go through it all again. You want a strong flat foot on the ground. Most of the weight on the balls of your foot, make sure your heel is planted or else you're susceptible to bounce. You want to get your knee locked and in position because if you get nervous at a game, that's going to help you, but also it's going to stop you bouncing around too much and giving um, any uneven weight distribution, driving your weight through your hip forward. So that 80% of your weight there, you should feel it in your hip, you should feel it in your knee, pulling down your calf and Achilles. And then whether you are 90 degrees, 45 or straight on, your hips are the most important part to align your upper body to make sure that your shoulder is not compensating for what your forearm and tricep should be doing. So there you go, there are some real basics. If you go and look at any player um, in the top 32, apart from Menstrua, um, they're pretty much all doing one of those three. If somebody is on the 90 degree angle, they are pivoting their hips towards the board. A great example of that is Steve Beaton. Steve Beaton sets up and every time you see him take his dart, and he looks up and turns. And that is just the perfect example of that pivot is about your upper body facing the board and your lower body being where you feel natural, but making sure your weight and balance is all driven through your hips, through your knee and onto a flat base on the floor. So um, if you think I'm talking a load of rubbish, um, leave a comment. Um, but they are the basic principles. 31 of the top 32 have got that technique more or less. Um, so if you are struggling with balancing at the hockey, you find you're jerking with your throw or you're reaching for it or you're bringing in too much shoulder into your game, take one of those simple steps. Make sure you're compensating for whatever foot position you have by using your hips and 
align your head as directly as you can behind the dart whilst keeping a straight throw like that as you can. Um, and that's the best advice I can give you. Um, if you've got any comments or any um, added tips that you'd like to give people who are struggling with their stance and balance at the hockey, um, put a uh, comment in the comments below, um, get a discussion, let's share the knowledge out there. Um, but otherwise, there you go. I will see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and everyone stay safe.